What is up, you guys? Welcome back to another edition of the podcast. My name is Ramon, and this is Dad's Podcasting Project. Today, I wanted to share a couple things that are actually Instagram related. My wife was, sometimes she takes these deep dives onto Instagram and comes up with some pretty wild, wild videos that she she sends me. And to kind of share some of these, one of them is just crazy. We've got this woman who is firing a, a handgun into her neighbor's like garage and then proceeds to throw a flaming towel into the garage door. I, I don't know where she's, my wife is finding this stuff or why people are even recording themselves doing this because it looks as if the camera is in the woman who's firing the weapon. It looks as if it's in her backyard. So this is her house, her camera, and her footage, really. It's just, I don't know, man. It's pretty wild, some stuff that's out there. And it it, it really rings true that you kind of really got to be careful when it comes to to just people in your neighborhood. I think long gone are the days where you can just live and uh, maybe a peaceful environment. There's a lot of crazy stuff happening out there. And she sent me this other video that actually happened today. I think it was today down in Huntington Park here in California where a truck ended up losing like the, the driver must have lost control or went out of control in a, in a pickup truck and just started barreling into vehicles in the intersection. And what's what's crazy is, at least the, in this post, it says that the police say that no one was hurt and the truck's 75-year-old driver refused medical attention. The investigators determined that alcohol was not a factor and said it appears to be an isolated incident. So the man is not in custody. So, I mean, I guess being 75 years old, Maybe just something got to him, old age, lost focus, lost control. In an article that I was reading about how high the risks of traffic accidents are here in America and how much death is related to traffic accidents in general, it ranks the top four in causes of death two Americans. And even recently, just a coworker of mine was in a traffic accident himself. Now, there's a lot of things that can come into play with this. There's inebriation or intoxication. That's usually a a common go-to. But I think that as a parent, one of the things that people might not think about is just drowsiness. There are days or mornings where I am just totally exhausted and it feels as if coffee isn't really doing it for me. I can pound an energy drink, I can drink a coffee, and the energy drink is just like juice or it it has the same effects that juice would. And I can drink a coffee and it would have the same effects that a hot chocolate would. I'm not really getting that that pick-me-up from the caffeine, so to speak. And... It's something that causes concern. My wife and I, we discuss the lack of sleep sometimes and how she doesn't want me on the on the road feeling like that or driving around like that. And seeing some of these traffic inc- incidents on Instagram, especially, it, it just really makes you think how, how important it is to get your sleep. I know that kids, at least our kids, for example, they don't really allow that all the time. I know that our daughter, she is going through another round of new teeth coming in and it just feels like her sleep it can just get so thrown off because of that. Just the amount of pain that she must be in as these new teeth are coming in. I feel like even infant Tylenol or Oragel, it just doesn't have any effect. It's got to be something just excruciating for her to have to to have to go through. And because of that, her sleep is affected. And as a byproduct, my wife and my sleep is also affected. 
Now, my wife, she does her a, a very major part in really trying to get to these children, trying to get to our kids and care for them as best she can without interrupting my sleep. But I think my, my hearing has become a lot more sensitive in my old age. And hearing my kids as they're crying, it definitely gets me to wake up. I think I used to be a pretty heavy sleeper back in my more formative years. But as time passes, and it's probably a good thing that as soon as there's a little whimper or a little rustling in the monitor, I'm up for it. But still, it yields restless nights and can lead to pretty pretty drowsy mornings on the road. Again, I try my best. I, I try to get my coffee. I try to get my, my energy drink. But some days it feels like that just doesn't work. And I know that for other parents out there, you're probably in the same boat. I also have another coworker who recently had his son and right away, I mean, he's back. I think he took maybe four weeks out or four weeks off, I should say, for paternal leave. And anybody who says that that's a vacation is they've not taken paternal leave because it, paternal leave is not, it's not easy. It's, it's one of the things that I very quickly took back. I didn't, I don't think I ever made it folk. I never vocalized my stance on stay at home parents. I felt internally, of course, that it has to be an easy job. You're home with the kids. You, there's no way it can be that hard. There's no way it can be as hard as actually going to work, working a nine to five, doing construction, fabricating or welding, laying concrete, working a 16 hour, 12 hour shift as law enforcement on your feet all day or you know, out in the hot sun. There's no way it can, it can compare to that. And when I took my paternal leave, for our daughter, day one, I was proved wrong. There was no way <laughs> that those other jobs can compete to what it is to be a stay-at-home parent. I'm sure when your kids are older, it becomes a little bit easier. But even then, I may be just talking out of, out of thin air, grabbing at straws. But when they're newborns, when they're infants, and even toddlers, they demand so much of your time. A schedule means nothing to them. When they are hungry, it doesn't matter the time of the day or the night. They want food. And they have no way of conveying that to you other than either screaming, crying, or a combination of the two. And you just got to do it. You can be tired. You can be exhausted. But you got to get up. You got to make that bottle or you got to be ready to breastfeed if you're if you're the mother. And again, diaper changes, irregular sleep patterns. Even even with our son, he didn't care much for being let go. Like we would lay him down and he wanted to be he wanted to feel our touch. So either we had to leave a hand on him while he was sleeping or we had to hold him until he fell asleep. And even then, it felt as if while he was sleeping, one of us had to be awake. Either my wife had to be awake or I had to be awake. Now, for our daughter, at least we got a little bit of a break because she was a little bit better of a sleeper. She could fall asleep and be put down. However, her sleep patterns were very short, 30-minute increments, 20-minute increments here or there. And this was early on while she was an infant. Then, as I mean, as time has been progressing, her naps have been a little bit better. Her sleep schedule has been a little bit better. However, we have to, we're now being introduced to teething. She's, she's sprouting teeth. And with our son, it seemed as if it was one at a time. However, with her, it seems as if she's getting every, every round, she's getting two teeth at a time. So the amount of discomfort she must be going through, it's got to be through the roof. So being a stay-at-home parent definitely definitely is not easy. And I, I give all the respect that I can to those who do it, 
especially if you have more than one kid because the level of difficulty I can only imagine increases. We have two children and it's plenty hard. I could not envision three. Though my wife and I would love three at this time, we're not even thinking about it. But I mean, with that, with that being said, <laughs> and my lack of sleep, um, drowsiness, that's another, another really big one in dangers on the road. And there's another one. Oh yeah, distractions. Here I am looking at my phone and it's one of the things that I, I think I've made a good, I guess a good stride in progression at putting my phone away while I'm driving and not really reaching for it, not really looking for it. I'll get it started before I go and get my internet radio going, my Pandora or whatever, or a YouTube playlist and then I'll put my phone down. And when I was a lot younger, I was talking about this with a, a buddy of mine. When I was younger, I remember back in the days of the Nokia phones where you had to press the button X amount of times to get the letter that you wanted when you were sending a text. And this was also before T9 Word. For those of you who don't know, T9 Word would kind of guess what it is you were trying to type. And then you can just I forget what button you would press and it would just automatically fulfill whatever that word was that you started typing and you didn't need to scroll through say to to type the letter c you didn't need to press the number two or the number one uh three times because it would be a b and c there'd be like about three three letters for every number and then I think the fourth was the actual number if you wanted to type a number so text messaging was very slow back then. It wasn't as fast as it is today. We didn't have things like autocorrect or a full-blown keyboard. Uh, I think it was a BlackBerry was the first smartphone to integrate a, a full-touch keyboard. And then the iPhone came and completely changed the game. And the way we send text messages and the way we type to each other nowadays is just completely different and is far removed from where I started with text messaging. But I remember I was driving a stick shift at the time. It was my first car. And I, <laughs> I would be texting while driving. And this was also before it was illegal to text and drive. I think cell phones, they were still a very new thing. Talking on the phone while driving hadn't been put into law yet. I could be wrong. I didn't know about it, so I figured it wasn't a law. Texting while driving. Texting was something that was completely new. Back then, you had, like, your cell phone plans didn't include unlimited text messages. Text messages were like an afterthought. It, they were trying to sell you on minutes. So you would have, like, these package deals where it was, like, uh, 120 anytime minutes or, yeah, 120 anytime minutes and then unlimited minutes after, say, 6 o'clock. So 6 p.m., you could use your phone for as long as you wanted. But anytime, Monday through Sunday, before 6 o'clock, you only had 120 minutes. And then, like, years later, they would incorporate things like rollover minutes to where eventually you just had an unlimited phone plan. And text messages, they were like wildly different than they are today. Text messaging packages included like five free text messages, 20 free text messages. Like you can send five messages or you can send 20 and it was 10 cents per text over that amount. So if we had that kind of setup today, I imagine people would have bills in the hundreds, if not many hundreds I wouldn't think like thousands of dollars. I would think like kids today, even myself, I think I send on average, it's like five to maybe 600 text messages. So multiply that by 10 cents and there you go. I don't even think, how much is that? I don't even have my calculator available for me right now, but, and I don't really feel like crunching the numbers, but I mean, you multiply that and 
here I am now pulling out my calculator. So 500 text messages times 0.10 cents equals, oh, 50 bucks. <laughs> so maybe not hundreds of dollars more, but your cell phone plan would be $50 more. And then maybe that maybe that is a lot of money because also back then, minimum wage was a lot lower than it is now. We're talking about going into the $15 per hour for minimum wage jobs. Back then when I first had my cell phone, I think minimum wage was $6.25. So to get a cell phone bill with a tacked on, tacking on $50 more would have been just insane. Though I didn't have very many bills, I also didn't have $50 just to throw out there for sending text messages. So I guess getting back to it, I would dr- I would be driving a stick shift car while trying to text at the same time. And it wasn't until I was driving with my dad that he looked over and he was like, boy, are you crazy? Like, what are you doing? Whatever it is you're doing right now, stop and drive your car. And it, it, I guess that was kind of like my mini lecture, mini awakening, mini wake up call. But I hadn't done it since. I've looked at my phone from time to time. I even had one of those things where you can prop your phone up in your car air vent. But again, it's too much of a distraction. And when we talk about automobile accidents being the top four reasons or the top four causes of death here in the United States, I think it accounts for 240,000. Either it's 240,000 or it's 148. Thousand. I can't remember the exact number offhand, but it's in the hundreds of thousands of people die because of avoidable traffic accidents. And that's not one thing that I want in my life, I guess. And so when my wife shares some of these videos with me, it's like, this to me seems like something that you can really be in the wrong place at the wrong time. This man slams into the side of a parked SUV like full bore. And it makes me wonder, like, if had someone been in that vehicle, had you been waiting at a stoplight or whatever and unable to move forwards or backwards, how would you then, I mean, it, it would be an unavoidable situation. And it very well could end or change your life in a very dramatic way for a very long time. Just something that, I don't know why my wife is looking at some of these things sometimes. I mean, it it can be pretty dark. But the last video that she sent me was from an Instagram account called Police Cams. And apparently this was taking place in Atlanta, Georgia at an airport. And a surveillance camera in the atrium of Hartsville-Jackson Atlanta International Airport over the weekend captured a woman who was trying to grab a stroller with a child in it. Pretty much just trying to take a child out in the public. But the thing that stood out in this video, as this man noticed what was going on and walked over to help stop it, he left his child in the stroller unattended. And police, they detained the woman, took her into custody. I'm not exactly sure what they did with her, if any charges were pressed against her for the attempt at committing a crime. But just the fact that this man left his child unattended in a stroller, it reminds me of one of these, of some of the stories I've heard, and I don't know how many of them are true, how many of them are fake, that would be posted on Facebook. I want to say this was like a couple months back. There would be stories saying that there was a couple in your local park attempting to kidnap a child and that it was more like a bait and switch type setup. So they would be attempting to kidnap a child to get the attention of everybody in the park. And as people would come to help or someone would come to help, other children would be left unattended. And one of those unattended children was actually the intended child to be captured and someone else would come in and take that child. 
So after the entire altercation comes to an end and everybody's trying to settle back in to where they were and get back with their kids, somebody's missing. And it can be a very scary thing to see someone try to kidnap a child. I've never, I hope to never be put in that position of seeing something like that. Because as a parent, it just, it automatically gets your blood boiling to think that there can be somebody out there who would want to take someone else's child or even take your child. It, it's unsettling. And the levels with which you would go to prevent that from happening, it's, I can't even really speak on it. So to think that this man was actually very lucky that it was only this isolated situation and that him leaving his child unattended, though in the video it makes that child look very vulnerable, it's a good thing that it wasn't some bait and switch type situation because someone could have very easily came up and made that child the intended target. It's just one of those things. Like I think that the times that we're growing in today are much different than just this whimsical idea of what it was like in our parents' day or in our grandparents' day where kids can just go. They can just go outside and just be gone all day. And if they come back before, before it's dark out, because that's the rules, then they come back. But in today's today's day, I guess, or I can't really formulate (laughs) how I wanted to put that, but today that doesn't really feel like it's a good idea. That if my kids are going to go somewhere, at least at this age, I'm going with them. There's always I always make it a point to have a line of sight I think it was early on like my son cut around the corner at a target and for like half a second he was out of my vision and like I had a mini panic attack like you've got to stay where I can see you and when you have two kids I mean you got to stay close now there's no wandering off I can't remember the age I was when I would go shopping with my parents and my my brother and I, we would just go off and play. Or when we would go to the mall and we would just leave. Like we're just gonna go to the to the video game store, or we're gonna go check out, say, some electronic section in Sears. And our parents were just totally fine with that. Go ahead and meet meet us back at the clock, or like there was a central meeting place at a certain time. Because, again, this was also before cell phones. So it just worked. It worked back then. I'm not exactly sure how I'll approach it today. I think as my kids get older, as I become more confident in them, as young adults, then maybe we'll find ourselves in that position. But until then, it's really it really is hard for me to see that, to see me being that way at this time because there's so little. But that's kind of all I've got for you guys today. A few little little Instagram posts that my wife had shared with me that I thought about talking about and sharing with you guys. I want to thank you if you made it to this point in the podcast. If you're catching me on iTunes, be sure to leave a like and leave a review as well. That would be great. If you are listening to this on YouTube, be sure to give that thumbs up. Subscribe if you want more content like this. I know that I was doing reviews and I may do more reviews, but this is also not a review channel. Like I'll review things that I find interesting or that I really that I have time to watch because as I've mentioned to to many people, once you have children, your time, at least my time, is dedicated to them. Things like television shows, things like movies, they become very hard to make the time for because my time is prioritized and mainly dedicated to them. So 
things like movies or things like shows, that has to come on my time, which is either when everyone's asleep or in between work, really, like breaks and lunches. So until next time, you guys, I want to thank you again. See you.